Everyone, Liam here. Welcome to the How to Paint Dark Angels video. If you've got any questions, any feedback, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If the video is helpful, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. It means a huge amount to me to keep improving the channel and growing. If you want more in-depth tutorials, then feel free to check out my Patreon. The links for that are in the description below. So the model, as you see it, has been base coated with a black primer through an airbrush with a small amount of green. You do not need an airbrush for this. You can prime it with a rattle can, you can prime it with a paintbrush, whatever works for you. The black will also be fine, but I put a little bit of green in it just because I like, I don't personally like to have pure black on a model unless I have to, just personal preference. So whatever works for you in that regard. That is not the important part of this model. So what we're gonna start with, scale 75 boreal green. This is basically just a dark green. You can supplement it with whatever you like. And I'm thinning this paint down to two parts water, roughly to one part paint. The idea here is I'm going to leave still a very strong mark on the model, while the paint is thin enough not to leave a physical blob of paint. Like I don't want to lose any of the detail. I still want that nice smooth surface. I'm painting very quickly, not worried about blends or smooth transitions or anything like that. If you do that, that's fine, but it's a very slow way of painting. And this is supposed to be a fun, high quality result without an airbrush. So what we need to think about first of all is the shape of our highlights. And I'm breaking these, the parts of this model down into shapes. For example, the shoulder pad is effectively a cylinder along the, across the top. So we are, our highlight, is going to be a circle pretty much and then as the shoulder pad curves down it turns into a little bit of a cylinder so that circular highlight you can see that i've just pulled it down the arm i treat the whole arm as one piece one cylinder and you can just see that there's a line of highlight that goes down it so it's all about breaking these things down into shapes and i'll speed up this footage as you can see so you can see everything that I've painted and how I've done it and how I've chosen those shapes, but it's whatever works for you. The important bit is, is we want to leave that dark base coat in the shadows. All right, because that's what's going to give us our contrast. That's what's going to make it pop. We want to keep our base coat, whatever you chose to use, showing. So next up on the wet palette, we've got scale 75 Arati Green. This is obviously quite a bright green. If we put this straight over what we've already got, it's going to be really strong and we're going to have later on a lot more work when it comes to bringing the transitions together. So what I've done, you can't see it on the wet palette, but it's a 50-50 mix of Scale 75 Boreal, Boreal Green, so basically a dark green, and the Scale 75 Arati Green. Now, this is something, this is quite close to like a snot green color. So... These, these paints are not overly unique. So if you go to any other brand, they'll have an equivalent. But what we're gonna do now is the areas that we have already highlighted with that previous layer of Boreal Green, we're now gonna go over with this 50-50 mix of the Arati Green and Boreal Green. The difference here is we don't wanna cover it completely. We want to leave some of that Boreal Green around this new mix. Now, what is really important to note here is the paint again is thin, two parts water to one part paint there or thereabouts. You want a fairly, you want the paint thick enough so it doesn't leave a physical texture on the model, but you want it thin enough so it's somewhat transparent. Now, it's also worth noting like my brush strokes here, I'm not using very sweeping brush strokes generally unless it's a really small area. You'll see when I go over things like the shoulder pad and that sort of stuff, Painting with the tip of my brush quite a lot. Sometimes I'm stabbing the model, um, almost like a, a really messy stippling. This is a way that I paint quite often. And what it does is it creates quite rough textures and interesting surfaces. And you can get, as you'll see at the end, some really nice results. And you can take it so far as to get perfectly blended transitions as well. But if you want to see more details on how I blend like that, you'd have to check out the Patreon. But Here's the process. If you keep watching, you'll see how I'm building up to this more traditional Dark Angels green.
So next up you have a choice in colors. You can go straight to the Arati green, so a pure Arati green from scale 75. And this will give you a much more traditional Dark Angels color scheme. And that will look great. In my case, I didn't do that. I added white to that 50-50 mix of Boreal green and Arati green. And this gives it a much more like a, a minty green, if that makes sense. There's no right or wrong here, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. So it's just something to, something to think about. If you don't want, if you want a more traditional Dark Angels color scheme, go and highlight the next stage with the Arati green. If you want more saturation, you would add yellow to it later on um, to get an even more vibrant, colorful, saturated green. But as I said, I've added white in this case. I've added a small amount of white just to brighten it up. And then same as what I did previously, I'm going over those highlight areas that I've done, but I'm leaving some of the previous mix around it. And once again, you're going to see I'm not painting neatly. I'm not worried about the transition at this point. I'm not worried about the nice blending. My brush stroke is I'm either moving my brush from one side to the other or I'm stippling really roughly. So I'm almost stabbing the model with this paint. My paint consistency is the same, probably two parts water to one part paint. And even when I'm doing that side brush stroke mo movement, I'm using the tip of my brush because I want to create a nice worn texture. And if I, this, this way, I don't have to worry about that ultra smooth finish. So what it means is, is if there's any brush strokes that are a bit, that look out of place, well, actually what's gonna happen is they're gonna look quite normal in this because we're gonna have a nice rough texture. Whereas if you're painting it ultra smooth, the minute you do a bit of a dodgy brush stroke, you're going to see it straight away. With this process, it doesn't even matter because you'll never notice it all blend in with everything else. So at this point, I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna base coat everything else on the model. Now, the green armor is not finished. All right, so the reason why I'm doing this is because the details around the rest of the model will change how that green looks and it's really important. So if you are get to the point where you're happy with your armor color, especially if this is your test model, okay? So if you're gonna do an army like this, because you could do an army like this, it'd look great. And it's not the slowest process once you actually know what you're doing. So. What will happen is, is you get your green to the stage that you're happy with it and then paint the details of everything else. And then that will change how the green looks. And then you can go back and make any adjustments like make the highlights brighter, make the shadows darker, depending on how it looks. I'm not gonna show you the footage of me base coating everything because it will just make the video really long and it's pretty pointless, but all of the colors used for the base coats, I will put in the description below. So feel free to have a look there if you wanna know what paints I've used. So with the eyes, when I was painting the eyes on this, it is a challenging thing to do. So I'm gonna try and go over it. We start off with, in this case, it's P3 Scorn Red. Now, the Scorn Red is a color that's quite transparent. So I've thinned it down to one part water to one part paint. So I'm still looking for as opaque a mark as possible while not while being as thin as possible. So again, it's not gonna leave any physical texture. It's not gonna reduce the detail that we have in this model. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm painting three quarters of the eye lens towards the center. I want ideally the outside of the eye lens to be black. The reason for that is, is because what will happen is once we go to the end stage where we put the white dot in the eye, it will have black around it. So it will pop as much as physically possible. Whereas in, if we put red on that outside, it will still work, but it won't be as powerful. So that right on that outside corner of the eye lenses, we want as black as possible. So try not to get it there. So you can see how 
the eye lenses are looking really dark red at the moment that's fine but they're not they don't pop very much so something to think about with your brush first of all you want a brush brush with a nice point get the paint on your brush and then remove the excess either pull the brush towards you and twist it on a piece of kitchen roll or your finger and then test your brush stroke on that kitchen roll or on your finger and you can see where i did it on my hand there what i'm doing is i'm testing to make sure that my brush stroke is really small because that way if i make a mistake it happens off the model and not on the model also for me personally i start at the inside of the lens because that's where i want it darker and then i'll do a brush stroke away from the lens because the Space Marine helmet has quite a ridge on the inside, so it's harder to move that brush away and not catch the armor. Whereas in if I do it towards the outside, it's a much shallower ridge. It's easier. There's less chance of a mistake. It's just personal preference, but whatever works for you. Think about your brush stroke because it does make a difference when you're doing it control your breathing as well a lot of people have shaky hands if you exhale as you do your brush stroke it will steady your hands and it will help once we're at the point where this is red we need to make a choice about what sort of color we wanted to go to make it brighter now because this is a such a small area i'm fine with going a little bit pink so i add some white to that red so we get more of a pink color and then what we're going to do is add a brighter area on this inside of the eye towards the inside of the head face. And then what that does is it gives it a nice transition. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it makes a big difference. So the last step is the white dot. This at this scale, this is what makes the eye lens look shiny now you really don't want a lot of paint on this you want your paint your paint to be as opaque as possible while being as fluid as possible you want it opaque because you only want to have to do this once you don't want to have to paint a dot on the same dot to make it pop also want it as fluid as possible because you if it's not fluid first of all it's not going to leave your brush very easily and also because chances are that paint is going to dry on your brush before you get it to the model and you can see me testing my brush mark on my hand when i'm painting dots on my hand i'm testing to see if my paint is going to behave the way that i want it to before i put it on the model it is also worth knowing i am really well known for not looking after my paint brushes you can see that i've got paint really far up the bristles on my brush don't do that treat your brushes better than i do and they'll last a lot longer so just something to think about you can see here where I'm trying to put the white dot on the eye lens and nothing's coming off. The reason for that is, is because the paint is too thick. It's not fluid enough. So it's drying before I get to put it on the model. Now with my own, I actually put a second dot on it. You don't have to do this. So what I've done is on the outside of the lens, the furthest away from the center of the face, I put a large white dot and then I put a slightly smaller one closer towards the head uh, the inside of the face you don't have to do that it's an aesthetic that i like um, and you might not be at the point where you can do that yet it takes a certain amount of brush control so just something to think about i hope this is this is helpful because lenses are quite difficult to do but just remember control your breathing test your brush stroke beforehand make sure you don't have a lot of paint on it
Now you can see a few changes from this. I've cut some of the footage at this point um, just because you can see that I've done the freehand shoulder emblem um, and more of the base coats are down and that sort of stuff. So you haven't missed anything important. If you want to see how I do the freehand on the shoulder pads and the knee and that sort of stuff, let me know and I can do another video on it because I have the footage. But it's mostly stuff that's not helpful because we can you can buy transfers for them. I just don't have transfers. So this is the model painted with all of the base colors down. So we're going to start refining this green at this point. Now, when you're painting to army tabletop, there's only certain things that are really important. Firstly, the head is important because that's what people look at. But when it's Space Marines, if you get the armor looking good, everything else can be a bit naff. No one's really going to notice. So you don't have to spend a lot of time on it. So the way this works, where we've got those previous rough transitions before, what I'm going to do is I'm getting a paint, which is the, the paints that I've used previously, sorry, the mixes of paints that I've used previously, and I'm getting the color, I'm mixing the color, which is between my highest mix and between, uh, between my darkest mix. And I'm thinning that paint down to say three or four parts water to one part paint, and then I'm going to do lots of little like dots, scratches, lots of really small marks going over certain areas of the highlight area and going over certain areas of the dark area. And what that does is it softens those two transitions and brings it together. Now, you can see on screen quite clearly how I'm doing it. The benefit of painting rough, remember, is it makes this part of the, of the process incredibly easy because you don't have to worry about smooth transitions you don't have to worry about those dodgy brush marks that make it look rubbish because effectively you're incorporating them in to the paintwork and it makes for a much more interesting result so for all intents and purposes this is a variation of stippling this painting process is a variation of stippling and if you want to know how to do it in depth, I do have a couple of videos on my Patreon, which really go over how to use this process effectively to create smooth transitions, interesting textures, and the variations of stippling that there is to create different effects. You can also see I'm starting to brighten this up now. So because we've got everything else painted, because we have color on everything else, we have the red down, we have the brown down on the chest eagle, we can see how this green is interacting. So at this point, I know I want to push the highlight. So where before I added a small amount of white to that Arati, that mix of Boreal green and Arati green, now I'm adding more white. Now I'm adding a brighter highlight and I'm making a smaller area to make that green armor pop. And you can see I'm still using that same process. Lots of little scratches, lots of little dots, lots of little marks to build up that textured finish. And you can see actually it looks really good. It looks, it's not a perfectly smooth transition that you can get with an airbrush, but it's much easier to fix any mistakes. So, and you also don't have to invest a huge amount of money into an airbrush. You also, you don't have to spend stupid amounts of time glazing. This is a really fast way of painting beautiful armies. If you've got an army that looks like this, it will look amazing. So it gives you absolute control and it's quite enjoyable. 
because it's not really you don't have to spend ages glazing it's not stressful so you can just enjoy it
So at this point, if we add the edge highlights, what it will do is it will frame the marine. And it's really important with Space Marines especially to edge highlight the relevant areas because what it does is it frames everything. It makes it easily readable. So don't forget to do it. You don't have to do it on every single edge. That doesn't make sense. Just the ones that are going to catch the light. But again, it will bring the model to life. So really important. So the chest eagle was base coated with Valerian model color USA tan earth. And then I've added ivory to that base color to brighten it up. And basically the idea here is that we're picking out each individual feather. I'm starting from the inside of the feather and then working my way to out because that's the easiest way for me to get that brush stroke so I don't make a mess. Start from the inside and work our way out. And I push it all the way up to the pure ivory. Right, so the final stage of the model is just to go over and pick out the important points. So what we're going to do with the green, I'm going to go to almost like a lime color, like a mint color, like a mint white. So it's a really bright green, lots of white added to it. And I'm going to pick out where I've got the brightest highlights. I'm going to push the edge highlight around those and that will make the green pop so much. And then other areas as well, I'll show you all the footage for it, but we're going to pick out little bits of silver, which we want brighter. We're going to pick out little bits of the red we want brighter. These last stages are really important and it will make the model pop a lot. You can see on screen that I've got the free hand on the knee pad, the shoulder pad dark angel symbol, and then the shoulder pad for the number and the tactical markings on the shoulder. If you guys want to see footage on that, you need to let me know because I've got the footage, but it's going to end up getting deleted probably because I'm not going to use it because most people will be using transfers. But if you want to see that, I can do a video on it. But this is a good look of the miniature all the way around on this footage. You get an idea of the strong points on it, the weak points on it. Remember, this is supposed to be a really good tabletop quality with a paintbrush. If you want to see more in-depth videos of this, as I said before, feel free to check out my Patreon or you can watch me paint this stuff live on Twitch. So feel free to check out the Twitch channel as well. As always, I'm open for commissions as well. I paint full time. I teach full time. If you want to become a better painter, feel free again, check out my Patreon, get in contact with me for tuition or I can paint the, I can paint the models for you, whatever works. But as always, I hope this is helpful. Thanks very much. Let me know what you think.